We don't have time because AI is grabbing the paintbrush. There are robots out there painting. As artists, we always want to grow. You don't have to be talented to be an artist. I just always lived as a person who questioned everything. Rules are meant to be broken. Welcome back to another episode of the Light Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Dunn. And in this show, we discuss how you can succeed as an artist without selling your soul to the dark art elitist system. I am joined today by none other than John Milan, DJ Freezy J, the extreme creative illustrator, drawer, extraordinaire, professional artist of over 27 years. In this episode of the Light Movement Podcast, we're gonna talk all about the rules of creating art so that you can learn them and break them. And John is the perfect person for this because John, he is a master of stepping into the rules and stepping out of the rules, <laughs> breaking the rules. So in this episode, we decided that it would probably be a little bit more fun and spontaneous if we, one, John didn't know at all what the subject was coming into this. Two, we have some food and some beverage so that, you know, it's a little bit of a cozier atmosphere and we can be free and to express any sort of rules that can be broken. So John, what are some of the rules that you were taught with an art? Hello, Jay. Thank you for having me on the show. While you were just describing all those interesting ideas, <laughs> yes, it is a surprise to me. And I keep wondering where something is about to attack me. I'm going to get <laughs> some kind of bizarre question. So this is a very good question. When I first started out with art. I met artists who, who were freestyle artists, but the one in particular, Allison, she had gone to universities and, and studied it forever. So she was doing portraits and semi-realistic things. And I noticed that her, her style was less conventional. So I, I always loved that from the start. And I, I met her when I was three or four. So I did, years old, three or four years old. Yes, I did get a, her name's Allison. Least, Allison who? Well, the last love? name escapes me because it was a very long time mm, ago. Okay. 52 years ago. Whoa. You just dated yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and I really remember getting a, a good view on what she was doing. It wasn't that conventional in, she was always very expressive. And so I thought because she was friends with my mother, that I would learn from her eventually. But she passed away at like maybe two years after that. So oh. I only knew her for a short time, but she still was a big influence on me. And she passed me a box of oil paints. When and you so were seven years old or? So? I was probably five or six. Wow. But so. but I, I'm going back in history just to think of what are the rules. She was definitely breaking all the rules and so was my mother. They were freestyle individuals kind of doing nine to five jobs and, and being fun and wild on weekends, I guess. And so what I would say to answer your question is don't we all kind of break the rules? I mean, society tells us to do a certain thing. We, we all do it, but there's a phrase that says rules are meant to be broken. I don't know who made that phrase. I can't pinpoint it. It was a rule breaker. But it probably <laughs> stayed with me. I, I wondered, I mean, rules are meant to govern and help you have a society that functions nicely. But if you don't ever expand or grow, as artists, we always want to grow and we don't want to stay with our same look forever. But we experiment, we make new looks and we try to run with them. And often that's how... A plant will grow a certain way, but a human will try new things. A plant maybe will turn giant all of a sudden. You'll have a tomato that's 700 pounds that looks like a rhino. But who told the tomato how to become a tomato and what size to stay? Hmm. Did someone put headphones on the tomato? Did someone sing to the tomato? Add nice nutrients? All of these things factor in. I call it flying above the matrix, getting out of the grid. Get out there and be a freestyler.
So what I'm hearing you say is that from a young age, you were raised outside of the conventions. And that's kind of one of the things that helped you learn how to step outside of the rules. That's true. But I also had a lot of boundaries. Hmm. I had to learn both sides. What were some of the boundaries that you were raised with or that you kind of... Well, one thing, we would go to church every Sunday, hmm. never skipping a Sunday. With your mom? Huh, that's very shocking. She didn't enjoy it too much, but uh, <laughs> I, I love the stories and I, they stayed with me. My grandparents really loved it and the people were nice. I wondered if I inherited some of the, the rule-breaking ideas from her and maybe from her generations past. It's just a thought. But as artists, when you start to think, if you're using your abilities or you choose that way in life, I happen to think that people can become an artist and get better and better and do what they choose to do. And it's not that you're born with something like that. So that's sort of like a, a rule of mindset that yeah. like you don't have to be talented to be an artist, but anyone can become an artist. Mm -hmm. Were there any other boundaries that you were raised with that you feel like had a influence on you and your perspective of creating art? My grandfather really wanted me to join the military. Hmm. So I thought at some point he's going to get a little more into it. And he would start bringing me on the ships. He was in the Coast Guard and he would bring me and introduce me to everyone. And I kept thinking, all of this is really interesting and I'm glad that People do this and it's important. I just can't take orders this way. And I wondered, I asked myself, why won't you take orders? Because when it comes down to it, that's a huge thing. In the military, you're going to have to take those orders. And that's the difference between a civilian and a military person. Mm. And so I just always lived as a person who questioned everything. Started off with those first few things, military, religion. We talk about the heavy topics here. So do you think that the exposure to the military and, you know, religion from an early age kind of made you want to rebel against it in some ways? Or because I don't, I don't really know what your perspective, are. I've heard Ellie's perspective, you know, from when, you know, you guys were in your 20s and early 30s and stuff. I've known you s for the last seven, eight years or so, but I don't know like what your progression of perspective Defiance? was. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that big of a deal. The main thing is you can ask an individual a lot of questions and they can be pretty pointed or a yes and no answer. But this particular answer is where it comes down to what do you believe in life and mm. how strongly are you going to fight for their right to have those beliefs. Interesting. Okay, so if we had to go back to art and think about some of the different elements of art that you feel like artists are taught, like let's let's say composition, right? Could you highlight some of the rules of composition? And then maybe yes. we could talk about different ways to break those rules. I know where you're going with this. Mm -hmm. When you start out into the field of art, the world of art, where you are going to now decide your art is going to go out to the world you have to make a choice what you're going to say with your art and a lot of people just want to say it's a pretty picture it's a picture of margaritas and you just uh, we got flowers we got we got bread we got things that are that we paint them pictures and that's right but the main thing is you have to know what is the significance of that picture and what's that that bread and what type of bread? Is it rye? Is it white bread? Is it brown bread? Okay. If you're going to have rules of art, you're going to follow those rules and have a strictness that you are going to come up with that works for you. You don't want to pressure yourself too much and stay in the cavern and never go outside and just, you want to be realistic. You want to have current topics. You want to have a beautiful scene. So the standards that you're going to use for yourself, the strictness, the routine, the um, the elements, the, the boundaries, you're going to make up these certain boundaries and you sometimes will want to cross them a little bit. It's such a fragile thing on the one-dimensional 
canvas. So you want to get... It's one dimensional? It goes into other dimensions. If you are going to be an artist, you're going to have to be staying on your job, getting the work done, and that's a fact. So even no matter how much you want to be a freestyler and go do other things around the world and don't do your art, if you skip it and just say that you're an artist and you're not making the art, you're going to feel bad about yourself. So what I hear you saying is that it's important to understand the rules so that you can break them sometimes, not by so much that you're just... I'm getting to that point. Shattering the rules, maybe, but in order to have some sort of success, you have to understand what the parameters are. Am I hearing you right? Yeah, certain principles and parameters. So you're just going to use the logic that we have now, where as in the past, it wasn't so much. Because the concept of money, when that came about, people started to barter and trade things. And when paintings became more popular, it was several hundred years ago, there weren't that many artists choosing to do this profession. Mm. And now we have more artists in the world that are sharing techniques and getting better and better. So fortunately, the world needs this push. And I think it's a very important. So giving yourself permission to go outside the boundaries and come back with fresh knowledge that you infuse into your works is very important. So what I'm hearing you say is that if you want to make it as an artist today, you have to be willing to push the boundaries. Yes. Thus far in this podcast, you've heard, just to kind of reiterate what's going on, John had this experience as a child where he had a mentor with an art who did not follow the rules and he was raised with certain religious and military structures that allowed him to push boundaries or put him in this frame of mind where he wanted to push boundaries and push back against certain ideas. And he realizes the importance of some rules and breaking those rules and knowing when to break those rules. We talked a little bit about composition. I think we covered that pretty comprehensively. What are some other rules with an art that one can learn to break? Learn and then break. I've got a good one here. Okay. Why is it that some people can get away with wearing a white t-shirt when others must wear a bow tie and an pressed suit? I believe that it has to do with the boss nature of a certain person. Do you carry with you extreme bossness or do you exude non-bossness this is a question because i consider myself top boss of all things in the whole entire universe but when it comes down to it i would tie the shoes of an infant in the rain in the sewer and then help them <laughs> build another universe i have a reoccurring dream where i'm wearing the wrong clothes and i'm out in public and i have to put on the right clothes and I believe the Lord just shows me these things over and over because he's, he's, he's gentle about it. He's, he's showing me different facets of the diamond of his thoughts where, why do we even dress up at all? Why are we wearing clothes? I have so many questions. So the, for the Lord to share that with me in a dream, I find it is important to dress up and people are looking for that right now. But I wouldn't go so far as to say it's the Hunger Games and we're wearing powdered wigs. I, I may be wrong. What do you think? What would happen if you did take off your clothes? <laughs> Metaphorically, not physically. Yeah. What would the real John look like? I believe like? that's what we're doing right now. That is what I believe. <laughs> There's only one way to be. That's yourself. And, you know, you can try all these different ways and get as fancy as you want. But when it comes down to it, you want to be as real as possible. And what we think society wants us to do or what all humans are asking of us, we do have a little bit of boundaries and that's wearing clothes. It comes down to why are you wearing the clothes? Like who are you wearing the clothes for? Are they for yourself or are they for others? If you're wearing the clothes and they're fancy, 
and you're wearing them because you love the feeling of the material or you love the feeling of having those clothes for yourself, I don't think that's bad. But I think if you wear the fancy clothes because you're wanting to impress other people. Th that's going to be built in. There's no way around that. Maybe, maybe. But likewise, though, I think. That would be the same thing as if you say, you're going to be a president. You're going to be under the microscope every single thing you do. The same applies to like if you don't wear fancy clothes because you're afraid of what others will think of you. It's just as bad as only wearing fancy clothes because you want to impress others. So I say get the fancy clothes. I'm, I'm trying it out. at least you look good and you feel nice. <laughs> I, I'm trying it. I, I enjoy it. I used to live in Hawaii for a long time, 20 years, and I was running around not caring about anything. So finally I had to put a little bit of clothes on to be around others. And then Sad I noticed day. I was smelling like a caveman because I often sniff cavemen. What was that like? earthy <laughs> I would say breaking the rules as an artist okay what you want to do is look at what's currently selling and what you would enjoy to do and just think on that one concept for a while don't break all the rules you want it to still be tasteful interesting very well-made art that has a zing to it that is looks effortless but it takes forever to make and is a special, unique style that everyone must have. So to find that missing ingredient and to find the missing ideas by searching within yourself, don't be so set in stone with your ideas to start. You can, within those boundaries, you can still make a million possibilities. Get out there and paint more and paint better than you ever have before. And whatever boundary is holding you back, hop over that boundary wearing your striped socks, slip around on the tiles, and make sure to put your shoes on. I think that one of the key components of breaking rules successfully is deconstructing the rules and breaking it apart into individual components and deliberately breaking rules, like not on, on accident. Like there's a huge difference between an artist who breaks a rule on accident versus an artist who breaks a rule on purpose. An artist who breaks a rule on purpose understands all the different elements of that rule and they do it on purpose because they want to achieve a desired effect. I think, you know, in terms of color, right? Like they're, they have these specific rules within color. Like you're supposed to have a certain percentage as the primary color, a certain percentage as the secondary and the, you know, tertiary color but to Jay, support that. And, we don't have time because AI is grabbing the paintbrush. There are robots out there painting that make things that are so far beyond what most humans are doing. We need to paint better than we ever have before. And we need to get our concepts together quick. Hmm. So we need think tanks, we need big groups, people who want to get the job done. For example, in terms of breaking rules, you know, with the colors, you have 70, 20, 10, or whatever the exact rule is. You know, there's ways to break rules specifically and intentionally to create a desired effect that enhances the overall meaning of the piece. I think composition's a good place there to start because... You know, for example, you have the rule of thirds and then you have the, you know, Fibonacci sequence and you have different areas that you should place a focal point within a painting. I think there's ways like it's it's almost easier to describe it within film. Like, you know, you're not supposed to have someone's face up against like facing the edge, the shot, right? Like if I'm in this shot, I'm not supposed to be over here and facing this way. There's people right. trying because to do that. Because that's uncomfortable. That's They're uncomfortable. trying to do that. But there's ways to make people feel uncomfortable with an image to create a specific desired effect. So, you know, if that's your goal, right? Right. To, when you do a huge 4860 and yeah. you have a girl turning almost with their face, almost not visible, you just have a little bit of a nose. How in the world did a person get away with that. But I saw a young lady just She'd be do arrested. it. No, she, she did it. So do you feel like you would be qualified? Like if we decided to elect, you know, an art police, would you be a good candidate for the art police? I get asked that a lot. And the answer is we all should be art police and we should police each other all the time. I would not be able to go around critiquing that 
often because I have quite a challenge with the few hundred people that I do speak with. But guess what? We can all share information really quickly now. And if we use a little bit of parameters, we can get the job done. Who keeps the authorities in check in our world, in our great big world? The answer is nobody. They're running rampant. Hmm. They're doing whatever they please. And they're making rules and they're breaking them. And we, the common folks, have to follow them strictly. You believe every person should be free to choose what they want to do as long as they're not hurting other people. Thanks for watching an episode of, well, you were supposed to let us know what the name should be. So if you haven't let us know what the name should be yet in the chat, we want to know what you think the name should be in the chat. We'll see you next time.